Just a quick disclaimer I wanted to put out before the video starts. This was recorded around the time episode 6 came out, I believe. The only reason it is just now being uploaded is due to personal reasons that I do touch on at the end of the video. So yeah, if you're confused by me like referencing, oh, I can't wait for when the finale drops or whatever, yeah, that's the reason why. This video was recorded around the time episode 6 dropped, but it's just now being uploaded for reasons. Um, But overall, all the points I made in this video still stand. And I still think the season was overall pretty good. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy. So, how about them boys? The boys season four has been the most divisive season of the show so far, for better or for worse. Whether that's because the conservatives didn't realize that the show was making fun of them the entire time somehow, liberals realizing that the show is also not on their side either, or some people just being burnt out from the show, I guess, which seems to be the category this person fell into. Season four has gotten some very mixed reviews, at least on the surface, but despite the Rotten Tomatoes score, which definitely is not a victim of review bombing, I would probably say this show is leaning more towards a positive reception right now than a negative one. And honestly, this season has definitely worked for me at least. I obviously can't make a judgment on whether it's as good as the other seasons yet because I mean, obviously it's not finished yet. But after the penultimate episode, it definitely looks like this season will be another win for the series in my book. However, today I wanted to look at a review from someone who is on the opposite side of the spectrum as me and this one intrigues me the most because unlike some people this review is actually attempting to critique the writing and quality of the show rather than just bitch and moan about political commentary that has literally been present since season one but that's for another time. So without further ado, let's hear what he has to say about this season. Season one and two of The Boys are some of my favorite seasons of television ever. I felt like I had to defend the show against people who assumed that the core demographic was Beavis and Butthead because of what they'd seen shared as memes on Twitter. And yeah, the show could go crazy, but what impressed me was the acting and writing. People love what I have to say. They believe in it. They just don't like the word Nazi. That's all. But then season three came, and rather than tidying up the storyline from the comics, the showrunners decided to take the creative reins and, well... I'm not even entirely sure what he even means by this. I have not read the comics personally, but I do know people who have, and I've watched enough videos covering the differences between the show and the comics. And I mean, I can confidently say the show has been inaccurate since the start. Like, it was quite literally never a faithful adaptation other than some specific characteristics carrying over for certain characters. Huey in the comics is literally some old fart, and Butcher is like, like seemingly younger than him, I think. And the show has even introduced concepts that to my knowledge weren't even present in the comics like Ezekiel, Doppelganger, Gecko, etc. Madeline Stilwell, who was one of the most important figures in season one and plays a major part in Homelander's characterization in later seasons, isn't even present in the comics. Like yeah, she's loosely based on a male character who was also named Stilwell, but I highly doubt that very creepy mother manipulator role was present in the comics. This point just literally makes no sense to me because a simple google search would tell you that this show was never a faithful adaptation which by the way is probably a good thing based off of what I've heard. Like I don't know I've heard nothing but awful things about the comics in general but maybe I'll read them one day. Season 3 kicks off with a crazy I can't believe they did that moment which was always a part of the show but it just never felt this gratuitous. Some of them were callbacks to the comic and some of them were there for character development or got placed into a scene where it felt natural for it to pop up. That's his fucking dick. Don't be so close-minded. The clip that you just played though kinda contradicts your entire criticism. The character's dick being present in the scene doesn't serve anything but humor, which is fine if you ask me to be honest. Complaining that the show that has always relied on over-the-top humor continues to give us over-the-top humor isn't really a criticism, it's just you grasping at straws. It being a callback to the comics does not change the point of the scene also. If you were to say the show in general doesn't work for me because it has too much shock value, then this point would hold some validity. But that's not the case because as you said in the beginning of the video, you love seasons 1 and 2 a lot. Season 1 and 2 of The Boys are some of my favorite seasons of television. So as it's 
understands you're critiquing something in season four, even though you're aware that this something has always been present within the show, but you cut the other season slack for whatever reason. In contrast though, this mission taking place at a party feels like an excuse to get this dick scene rather than a natural place for it to fit. Pardon the pun. Fast forward to season four and you get this ass eating scene. It feels the same. Comes out of left field so they can have a viral moment that people bring up later at the water cooler. It's okay. I gotta be honest, this is just a non-issue at best. Even if these scenes don't serve the story, what's the issue with their inclusion? Both scenes are very much played up and exaggerated for humor, which as I've already went over, shock value humor has always been part of the show, even in the seasons that you praise. Season 1 and 2 of The Boys are some of my favorite seasons of television. <laughs> Now to address why this criticism is also kind of a lie, the termite scene is our literal introduction to the character, the character who our protagonists are tasked with capturing. The scene serves as a way to show us termite being utterly irresponsible and reckless with his powers, which I don't know if you picked up on this or not, you know, it's kind of a subtle detail, um, is the entire reason the boys exist as a group in the universe in the first place. Yes, the ridiculousness of the situation itself is unnecessary, but I can say that about literally any gory scene in the show. The scenes still, however, serve the purpose in characterizing Termite and also showing us the current state of our protagonists and their dynamic with Newman and Huey at the start of season 3. As far as the season 4 scene, yes, it is just there for humor. I can agree on that, but as I've already went over, that's not an inherent flaw or problem with the show. I mean, season three has a dildo fight scene. Was the show always this broad? I mean, even just look at how they talked about herogasm in season three. Homelander jerking it at the end of season two was considered a gross out moment. <laughs> oh, oh you talking about sound design earlier. Ugh. In comparison, scenes like the ones in season four are so over the top as to not be gross anymore. Why are the evil guys having a meeting of the minds at the rehearsal in the first place? Is this really the most secure location to have this kind of conversation? No, it was clearly a weak excuse so that they could have a scene that felt like it came out of Itchy and Scratchy. It's just goofy and lowers the stakes of the show that wants to take itself seriously. Gross! Yet strangely compelling. The Deep goes from dealing with a horny dolphin to having a squid mistress to having an octopus girlfriend who's fully voiced by Tilda Swinton because, dude, I can't believe they're doing that. They got Tilda Swinton? That's crazy. Now... Who wants their balls crushed? Me? Ashley wearing these suits and being bald is just too cartoony for season one, especially when they've tried to give her some character in the past. I'm really sorry, me. Ashley in season one isn't the CEO of a company that is basically run by a psychotic version of Superman who at any moment could unalive everybody in his vicinity. Literally, why would she be the same character? And the Deep was always a character we were never meant to take serious. He's the comic relief of the show. The show's aware of this. They don't want you to take the Deep serious. Everything is played up for laughs. Like, I think the only time he's ever had anything resembling a serious character arc or moment is when he gets assaulted by his gills and has to get over his insecurity with his gills or whatever and even then it's still like kind of played up for laughs a little bit like if you don't find it funny that's fine but i mean complaining about this shit is so mundane and stupid like what which leads me to my next point the characters aren't just flanderized, but are either forced to behave in ways inconsistent with their character, or they get relegated to the hamster wheel of the same bored tropes. You owe me. I owe you. Ryan is still in this old, tired, will they, won't they between picking Homelander and Butcher to be his daddy. There's nothing wrong with this plot line, except we've been doing it since the beginning of season two. Okay, this right here, this might be the worst point he's made in the entire video so far. First off, no, they have not done the Ryan plot line since the start of season two. That's a blatant lie. Season two, he's living with Becca and Homelander just forces himself into his life. Ryan doesn't have a choice in the conflict in the matter or a character arc until the literal end of season two when Becca's a pack. And I don't see the issue with the plotline anyway. You yourself admitted there's nothing wrong with it. It makes sense why Ryan would be with Butcher in season three and then eventually switch to Homelander's side and would now be switching back in season four. In season three, things are going great with Butcher until Butcher starts taking V and the worst parts of him are front and center, causing him to lash out at Ryan and express his resentment towards Ryan for unaliving Becca. Homelander then comes in at the perfect moment and is honestly 
ironically a good father to him or at least one that he needs at that moment because that child deserves something and now in season four we see as he continues to give more exposure to his father and Vought and the lifestyle that he really lives mind you through his own experiences instead of people like butcher and mallory just telling him hey your father's a bad person he is now having second thoughts about choosing to go with homelander to act like ryan has had the same character arc or that it's been repetitive is just a blatant lie you're being disingenuous for no reason some shit birds. I mean, imagine being Reggie and having to play the same scenes over and over for three seasons. Oh, uh, I don't like Homelander and all the racism, but I'm also kind of greedy, so I d don't really want to be a good guy. But I mean, oh, gee whiz, uh, maybe I'll help, but uh, just don't tell anyone. This is the most dishonest simplification of A-Train's character I've ever heard, who, by the way, is the best part about season four. Yes, he has helped the boys in the past, but it was always out of selfish intentions and desires. He leaked the Stormfront info because he wanted to get back into the seven. A-Train in the entirety of the first two seasons is characterized as someone who is extremely selfish and corrupt due to his want for fame and acceptance. Yes, he may once or twice do something that is over okay on the surface but it's always out of selfish desires and intentions in season three we see this begin to change after blue hawk injures his brother which leads to him finally giving huey a genuine apology because he can now see why huey was so upset about robin and even then his arc is still not finished because the show itself does not treat this like a full-on redemption my brother is paralyzed i want some fucking justice seriously Justice. Yeah. You want justice? Yeah. <sighs> I have spent over a hundred hours in crisis management meetings, specifically figuring out how to cover up your bullshit, including all three of your straight up murders while you were out in the club with your crew or getting your toes up by Popclaw, who let's not forget, you also murdered. Yeah, that's right. I know about that. You did not give a shit about all the collateral you caused then. Now all of a sudden you care? Because it happened to you? Go fuck yourself. A-Train then proceeds to unalive Blue Hawk at Herogasm, which leads to his brother now hating him because instead of bringing Blue Hawk to justice, he chose to selfishly end his life. After losing that connection with the one person in his life who still had faith in him to be a good person, A-Train is now atoning and redeeming himself all throughout season 4. He even finally saves someone for the first time in his life, which nobody knows except for this one kid, making that one kid's smile and most likely inspiring him is the payoff of A-Train's redemption arc which has been building up for all four seasons. He's even responsible for Huey getting closure with his father and somewhat fixing his relationship with his mother and is okay with Huey not forgiving him even though Huey decides to anyway. To act like A-Train has had the same character arc or is the same character as season one is just flat out stupid, like genuinely stupid. Then there's the ultimate annoying will they won't they? which is Frenchie and Kimiko. This has been dragging on since the beginning of season one, and I'm expected to be jealous for Kimiko, who has firmly and rudely put Frenchie square in the friend zone. But you and I are not happening. Jesus, Kimiko, no one even asked. And how can I be jealous of this guy I know nothing about? We had an extremely short amount of time with Robin, but in that small amount of time, we were fed rapid fire bits of romantic chemistry between her and Huey. Where are we gonna go after all this I don't hot know. talk? More importantly, you know? where are we gonna go to lay some cable afterwards? <laughs> So when Huey was trying to process his loss, we already felt it with him. We missed Robin too. But this guy whose name I don't remember is only shown having extremely awkward interactions with Frenchie. If you want me to ship them, then show me them having a great time together before you try to break my heart over the will they won't they of it all. This is a valid criticism. Even I have to agree that the Colin plotline just hasn't really worked with me this season. Mainly just because, I mean, I have no emotional investment in Frenchie's moral dilemma regarding Colin because it kind of just feels out of nowhere since Colin is a character we were just introduced to this season. If the whole incident regarding Colin's family was something that was established earlier in the show, this plotline could have probably worked better, but honestly, as it stands, it is a miss for me. It also doesn't help that there's really not much chemistry between the two, at least not for me, because it feels like most of the time together, Frenchie she's just being extremely miserable and pulling away while Colin is trying to be healthy and become closer with him. It's a pairing that honestly was poorly executed but could have worked with some tweaks if you ask me. 
Let Kimiko and Frenchie stay friends. Let Ryan go evil and let A-Train stay a bitch. I just can't muster up enough energy to give a shit about these subplots for three whole seasons. And what's the shit with Sista Soldier? She's supposed to be the smartest person in the world, but she's destitute. She says she doesn't care about Pottery Barn, but why isn't she at least heading NASA? Is it because a bunch of books a set dressing was cheaper? Apparently she isn't smart enough to save all that book money by reading on a laptop. And everyone else underestimates her too. The boy's main trick against the soup so far has been to outsmart them since they can't just go toe to toe. So if anyone would understand how dangerous a super intelligent villain is, it's Billy Butcher. But he's the first to try to ask why she'd even get picked for the seven and say she doesn't even have powers. So you just got no powers, right? Size of brains? No. Nope. The entire context of this scene is him figuring out how to engage her, whether or not she's bulletproof or if she has something that can catch them off guard. He's in no way trying to devalue her. I don't know where you got that from. As a matter of fact, I don't even think there's a single point in the season where Butcher even questions why or how she's in the seven. Even in the context of the show, the group takes her very serious as a threat. MM literally takes a risk in recruiting a train just to get info on her specifically and what she is planning. I don't know what show you were watching, but she's literally never brushed off by the group at any point. And how long has she been around? The boys never thought to recruit her to help them figure out how to kill Homelander before? I wanna flip a train. What? Stan Edgar didn't think of that either? Good, Stan's an idiot now. And speaking of idiots, Homelander is the worst. In this scene, he's pissed because he's realized he's surrounded by sycophants. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Not one of you has the stomach to challenge anything I say. But how could he possibly be surprised when he's seen literally firing people for not being sycophants? Sorry, sir? Do you think you know better than me? Maureen, you're embarrassing yourself, you should go. First off, season three and season four are two very different versions of Homelander. I didn't think this would require much explanation, but here we are. The entire context of that scene is that Homelander is insecure and in his own head because this is after he just got Stan Edgar fired. The same person who checked his ego and told him that he doesn't know how to run a company and that he will regret his decision. Homelander's frustration here is less the fact that she's not kissing ass and more so the fact that he is realizing he is literally in over his head and Stan Edgar was right. The thing he hates the most, a human, was right. The entirety of season 3 is focused on this character arc for Homelander. I don't understand how you misinterpreted it this badly. Him not liking people who kiss his ass in season 4 makes sense given where he ended up by the time season 3 ended. You know the season that ended with Homelander realizing that he has surrounded himself with a bunch of incompetent people. You know, when the company first rolled me out in front of the cameras, they told me that I was going to get my very own team. I wanted so badly for that team to be the family that I never got. And then I got you. I've, I've always tried to help, sir. What, like when you ran away from hero gasm? Or maybe when you fucked an octopus? This is too dumb, even for Homelander. Yes, he's overconfident, but he's not a complete moron. Well, I'm not sure I'm supposed to be talking. I'm the Homelander. Mm -hmm. And I can do whatever the fuck I want. Earlier in the show, I assumed he could remember that he's reinforced a certain work culture for the entirety of his reign at Vought, but now I struggle to understand how he ties his shoes. While I do agree that Homelander's not dumb, obviously, you're severely overestimating his intelligence here. He didn't deduce that Stillwell was lying to him through context clues. He deduced that she was lying because her and Vogelbaum told two completely different stories. Stillwell said that Becca lost a child due to miscarriage, while Vogelbaum said that Becca and the child died during the birth of the child. These are two very completely different events. And also, as I've already gone over, season one and season four Homelander are two different characters. Expecting him to stay the same through four seasons of television is crazy. Also, what's the deal with the characters being haunted by hallucinations? Homelander, Black Noir, and now Butcher? In the same episode, you can see the Deep, Butcher, and Homelander all reacting to a voice only they can hear. No one in the writer's room thought, hey, 
eh, maybe we're doing this too much. Including the deep here is such a stretch. That's not a hallucination. It's him talking to a fish, which if you forgot is his superpower. Like what, do you want the guy whose sole power is to talk to fish to not talk to fish? And I mean, yeah, sure, Homelander and Butcher both have hallucinations, but like this is a non-issue. Are you gonna explain how it's bad? Cause it feels like you're just grasping at the most minor shit at this point. In a similar vein, Newman's daughter is playing on modern horror tropes in a way that's too on the nose. Oh, what are the kids like? Little monster girls? Great, let's do a little monster girl. The show has been reduced to all of the parts that Twitter would share and lost the great writing that backed up those crazy moments. It feels like they've had a change in mission statement to purposely play to the lowest common denominator and that makes me feel sad inside. Literally nothing that you brought up in this point was a criticism at all. Like, okay, yeah, they're making the little monster girl for shock value, sure can you tell me how the writing is bad because that is a claim that you just made is that it lacks the writing and you explain how this is a detriment to the plot or the story or the character or how it doesn't fit the show's themes or anything at all or are you just gonna make blanket statements with no elaboration at all on how any of it is an issue i'm pretty sure it's the latter so i am afraid that long term the boys could end up being forgotten like game of thrones it'll be remembered only as that shock jock show that started strong like a million others, but it falls apart as soon as the writers got too far ahead of the source material. But what else would I expect from a show produced by Lex Luthor about how heroes are the real problem? Thanks, Bezos. The show isn't even ahead of the source material. It also was never following it to begin with, but whatever. <laughs> that is the ending of his video, so um, yeah. I'm gonna preface this by saying please don't send any hate to his channel. I'm pretty sure he's a chill guy. At the end of the day, this is two people on the internet disagreeing over a show that has a man having intercourse with an octopus but this was just a really bad take or critique on season four which by the way is a flawed season i do think that there are issues with season four i don't find it to be as good as three or one however i do applaud this guy for at least attempting to critique the show unlike some people on youtube overall i would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below i personally have enjoyed this season and i can't wait for the finale but i understand if some people feel differently there are definitely some aspects that i'm not too crazy about i am sorry i went on a big hiatus after saying i was going to be more consistent if i have to be honest with you guys these past few months have been a mix of school family drama girl drama and your boy was just out of it mentally but got my motivation back now that she is gone she broke i'm up time time and if you catch my drift if you catch my drift so i actually do mean it this time i will be back to being consistent new video soon. Bye.